Well, it looks like Missouri may just beat Texas to the punch in becoming the first Second Amendment sanctuary state in America. Um, the Missouri House has recently passed the Second Amendment Preservation Act, uh, which will uh, nullify uh, federal gun laws that the state deems to be unconstitutional. It says, you know, essentially any unconstitutional gun restriction um, shall not be enforced in the state of Missouri. This is very positive. Every state should do this. Um, this is uh, an act of nullifying unconstitutional federal law. Now, the point of this, of course, is um, to nullify any uh, potential incoming uh, federal gun legislation. This is the state of Missouri preemptively telling uh, the Biden administration or any future administration that, hey, if you try any gun grabs, we're not going to go along with that. You're going to have no resources. We are not going to have our police uh, breaking into people's homes and stealing their guns. You can send in the FBI if you want, but uh, you're going to have to spend a lot of resources to for the FBI, you know, to comb through uh, <clears throat> every nook and cranny of the state of Missouri. It's a big place. People are very spread out. It's not like just you know, <clears throat> trying to uh, go kick in door to door uh, urban warfare. Um, you know, Missouri is a large, uh, rural, largely rural state. So sure, uh, you know, the feds might be able to steal guns from uh, Democratic voters in the inner city, uh, but they're not going to be able to take them from, uh, you know, Republican voters out in the countryside. It would just be uh, logistically impossible. Now, uh, the governor of Texas also said um, that Texas is going to be moving this direction. This is going to be a top priority of the next legislative session uh, for Texas. Um, my video discussing that, um, I'm proud to say, is my most popular video of all time. And the only reason I bring that up is because it shows uh, what an amazing amount of interest there is in this topic. It was uh, the responses that I got to that were overwhelmingly positive. People were very supportive. And considering, you know, Greg Abbott's not the most popular governor in America to begin with, um, it shows just how popular of a policy this is. Um, and it's something that every red state in America um, should be taking up. And anywhere where the Republicans control a trifecta of the state house, state uh, senate, and uh, the governor's mansion, uh, they should be passing these kinds of laws. Because it's common sense that if you have a second amendment right uh, to bear arms, that the federal government um, you know, can't just pass laws to infringe upon that. And if the federal government does pass laws to infringe upon that, there is absolutely um, zero reason why any state government uh, should assist the federal government in violating your rights. Now, as I've been saying for a long time, uh, guns <clears throat> are one of the issues that I'm the most optimistic about because I think that the debate is over. There's no more debate to be had. People's minds are made up. Um, there is no um, going to be any uh, um, I guess, gradual erosion of Second Amendment rights. People ha understand that, okay, they just want to take our guns. And so every little thing that they propose is not about, you know, oh, if we can just save one life. No, it's about we want to take your guns. And, you know, uh, even if we can't get that done right now, we'll settle for just gun registration. We'll settle for attacks on ammunition. We'll settle for banning online ammo sales. All of which... Um, you know, would be considered unconstitutional by the state of Missouri and therefore nullified within their borders. I think that it's important uh, that Missouri is doing this before um, there's any real threat of any new gun legislation um, because, you know, they want to be, on, you want to be on the offense as far as this is concerned. You don't want to be playing defense when it comes to the erosion of your rights. You don't want to lose them and then try and claw them back. You want to hold on to them as tightly as you can and not let go of them to begin with. And frankly, passing these kinds of laws, the more states do it, will serve as a deterrent to the federal government passing new gun laws because they will know that uh, it will be unenforceable in much of the country and that the only places where these laws will be enforced is where you have, um, I guess, compliant uh, state administrations. And overall, even beyond the gun issue, this is a positive development because this is how, uh, this is the direction I want to see um, laws go in America generally. Uh, I think that the, the very idea of federal law is something that needs to disappear. There are way too many different people in America who, leave, who lead very different lifestyles and have very different cultures. Um, you know, in order for some centralized power to pass laws that will apply to 350 million people, it's just not practical. 
Um, you can't have the same set of laws governing that many people across you know, different time zones, different climates, um, and different societies. There is no unified American people. People in this country are different from one another, and that's okay. Uh, New Yorkers do not need to be like Missourians. Um, and, you know, the people of Texas don't need to be exactly like the people of California or Oregon. Um, you know, the people of Florida don't need to be exactly like uh, the people of Vermont. And, of course, you have problems of divisions within states, but those are less extreme. That's less of a problem than it is when you have uh, an all-powerful federal government uh, that is just uh, stripping away um, the rights uh, of individuals across this entire country. It's taking one issue off the table, and that is worrying about the federal government. Then you, of course, still have to worry about your state government. Um, if your state government is, you know, is not exactly in favor of freedom, but at least, you know, that's one less thing to worry about. And, you know, of course, you have the alternative. If uh, the only problem is your state government, you could just move to a different state. And, you know, even though that that would not be optimal for a lot of people. I'm sure people love their homes, but I mean, if it comes down to it, you at least have that option. Right now, nobody has that option. Nobody can flee somewhere uh, to where they feel safe if they feel threatened uh, by the federal government. I mean, where are you going to go? Canada? Canada's even worse on it by every metric. Now, the Second Amendment Preservation Act in Missouri has not um, been signed into law yet. Um, I think it's going through reconciliation because I, I keep seeing headlines from a week ago that's saying that it passed the House, but then I see now that it passed the House again, so that makes me think that the bill went to the Senate. Uh, you know, they did whatever their thing was, the Senate passed it, and then now it went back to the House um, for like reconciliation. That would be my guess, though I don't know that for a fact. But either way, it has not um, hit the governor's desk yet, um, but once it does, I would expect it to be signed. The governor of Missouri now is a Republican. Back in 2013, apparently they tried to pass a similar act um, from an article I was reading, and uh, that was vetoed by the governor, who was a Democrat at the time. Um, you know, it's kind of funny to think that not too many years ago, Missouri did have statewide elected Democrats. Um, hard to imagine now, but uh, but it was true. Um, and the House and Senate almost overrided his veto. The House had enough votes to do it, and the Senate fell one vote short only. So even back in 2013, um, there was a lot of support for this in Missouri. And so I, I would think its support for such a thing has, has grown substantially um, over the past seven years in this country. In fact, I would go so far as to say that uh, the nullification of federal law is the only uh, real path to de-escalating our very um, tense political situation that we're in because people are constantly scared that, uh, you know, whenever they're not the party in power in Washington, that they're going to lose all their rights and that they're going and that, the, you know, it's going to be the end of the world. If we set this precedent that states can, you know, uh, just ignore federal laws and say, you know, screw you, you violate our rights, we're not going to go along with that, um, then that will calm things down quite a bit. Uh, it will defang the threat of the federal government and, um, you know, not just for red states, but also you'll see blue states starting to do this because they start to do it first with their second or with their uh, their sanctuary city policies for um, uh, for illegal immigrants. I mean, that's where the whole Second Amendment sanctuary thing comes from. Uh, I mean, it, at first it was sort of like a boomer con joke. It's like, huh, you think you can make sanctuary cities for illegals? Well, let's make sanctuary uh, cities for uh, for gun owners. Um, and now people are doing it. In fact, um, one county in Missouri, I think it's Newton County, just passed an ordinance uh, that is uh, that would jail uh, federal officers for trying to violate uh, people's Second Amendment rights, which again would be the next step. After saying that, okay, we're not going to spend any of our state resources violating the Second Amendment. If the feds pass this law, they'll have to do it themselves. The next step is then outlawing the feds doing it themselves, um, which would be excellent. Um, but again, that's that's the next step. I mean, maybe you could roll the home to one bill, but you know, I'm fine with it being a two-stage thing um, because the way that I mean, at, at first the whole Second Amendment sanctuary thing started out county by county. Now we have a state doing it. We have Texas, which is expected to do it. Um, I will be very disappointed if Florida does not move quickly uh, to do this as well. You know, the uh, our governor here, DeSantis, you know, made a big deal about this legislation that they're pushing, uh, you know, about uh, social media censorship. Um, but uh, frankly, I care, I care much more about the gun thing. Uh, like in the long term, that's a bigger issue. Uh, you know, yeah, the social media thing is, you know, is a, is a legitimate problem. I, I think that, you know, it's something that should be dealt with. I don't know necessarily if I agree with them. I, I'm still split on the social media thing. I don't really know what to do about it. 
but that's a topic for another video. But the, you know, the gun thing is very clear. Um, and here in Florida, we've had a Republican trifecta since, uh, I think my entire life, it was the late 90s, like 98 or something. Uh, we've had a Republican governor, House, and Senate. And DeSantis is clearly uh, the furthest right um, Republican governor that we've had. And so we need to, you know, jump on board the Second Amendment sanctuary bandwagon quickly. Um, maybe I'll try and put in a call uh, to to some of the uh, state leaders of the party here, maybe my representatives. I don't know if that makes a big difference. I mean, I doubt it does, but maybe if enough people call. Um, so you know what? I'll do that. I have a limited reach, but I'm going to put out a call to action. Maybe this video will be as popular as that Texas one, or maybe even more popular, and I'll reach a lot of people. Um, Everyone, especially if you you know look up, see if you live in a state that has a Republican trifecta of the you know Republican control of the House, Senate, and the governor. Um, and if so, um, call your uh, state representative and your state senator, and uh, make the case to them as to why uh, passing this kind of a law, like the Second Amendment Preservation Act in Missouri, is a no-brainer. Um, it's something that they could easily get done, and it would something that would be immensely popular with the base. Uh, that would uh, calm down our politics. It would take the threat of losing our Second Amendment rights off the table. People would be able to be calmer um, uh, because this would not be a concern because we know, you know, if, if your state passes this law, you know that your state government is on your side and they will protect you. And if all of the solid reds, you know, all the, the states with Republican trifecta control um, pass these kinds of laws, then it might be become a little easier uh, to try and bring them up in states that don't have that. Maybe if you just have one house of, of the legislature controlled by the Democrats, maybe you'll be able to you know, get a, little, a couple of Democrats to, to cross the aisle to vote for this um, because it's so overwhelmingly popular. Um, that, this is how you, you, know, you build support for these kinds of things. Constitutional carry is another kind of law um, that I would like to see passed in more states. I mean, I believe Maine has it, um, which is kind of ironic because, you know, you think of Maine kind of being as a, as a pretty blue state. But, you know, and I would like to see everywhere. You know, you shouldn't need a permit to carry a gun. That's a pretty basic part of the Second Amendment. It's the right to keep and bear arms. Uh, if you have to go get a permit to bear arms, uh, you know, that doesn't, <laughs> that seems like a pretty clear infringement to me. But first and foremost, these Second Amendment Sanctuary Acts are the top priority. They should be the top priority for every legislator in the country um, if you believe in the right to bear arms. And, you know, in, in certain states, that, that goes for Democrats, too. There are still some pro-gun Democrats in state houses and state senates across this country. You know, I mean, look at Vermont, for example, very pro-gun state, um, even though it's, you know, it's obviously very blue and they have a, a liberal Republican governor. Um, I would think that in a place like that, you should be able to get this through. Um, New Hampshire, it's a no-brainer. I mean, they have a free stater who's now their Speaker of the House, I believe. I'm sure New Hampshire will be passing uh, a law like this coming up uh, at some point. Wyoming, I think, has one, um, whatever the term is, docketed maybe, like it's been filed, but it hasn't really gone anywhere yet. It might still be in committee. Um, but, you know, I, Wyoming, that's a, that's a no-brainer. Wyoming should be a Second Amendment sanctuary. And, and frankly, the Georgia Republicans, if they wanted to save their skin, they'd be jumping on this bandwagon too, since they do, you know, for the time being, still control um, uh, a Republican, you know, trifecta of the House, Senate, and the governors that, you know, the governor there. Um, they are very unpopular after what happened this last election. Um, and maybe to rekindle and, and try and re-inspire their base, you know, this would be a smart thing for them to do. So especially if you live in Georgia, uh, make that case uh, to your um, legislator and to your state senator. Um, and, you know, make it clear that perhaps if you're, if you're, uh, if you guys are not even going to go that far, maybe we'll just stay home next time. Because, I mean, really, in a place like Georgia, when they may, uh, where they very well uh, will lose their trifecta in the next election, um, why would they not be doing everything they can to try and protect the Second Amendment while they still can? Because once that law is passed, the only way it will be overturned or it will be repealed is if there is a Democrat trifecta in, in the House, Senate, and the governorship. And you know what? If you can't get it through the legislature, um, try making it a uh, a ballot initiative. Um, I, I totally forgot that here in Florida. Uh, you know, it's 
pretty easy to get stuff on the ballot as a constitutional amendment. So we have lots and lots of amendments that are on there every time. And most of them pass anyway, because most people, if they don't know, they'll just click, OK, yes, accept it. And so we have, you know, like the longest constitution in the country, second maybe to only Alabama. And so um, I didn't even think of that. I should go and try and um, <laughs> uh, start a petition uh, to get this on the ballot here, because I mean, it, it guaranteed it would pass easily, because not only is it popular, um, you know, if you word it in the way of, hey, any unconstitutional gun law should not be enforced, um, you know, which, <clears throat> uh, that, that just makes common sense to people. Well, of course, if it's unconstitutional, you shouldn't enforce it. Um, but, you know, just the fact that people vote yes on amendments anyway uh, is, that, I mean, that would be, that's a no-brainer. I, I need to go look into that. And frankly, so should all of you. If you have a similar state like Florida to where ballot initiatives, statewide ballot initiatives are, are, are practical, I think California is also a state that's kind of like that. And while I don't expect it would pass in California, um, it might still be an interesting exercise. And so with that said, um, you know, there's reason to be hopeful today. Um, I'm very hopeful after seeing this. Um, I can't wait to see more and more uh, initiatives like this um, around the country. Uh, so with that said, if you get anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.